Welcome! In this video we will begin discussing the second case for the WKB or semi-classical approximation. That is the case where the energy is smaller than the potential. And for that reason we will call this the non-classical region. Now let us begin our studies here understanding what it is that we even want to find. So whenever we have some particle that has energy that is less than a potential that it encounters, then it is going to partially reflect and partially transmit. And we want to find the transmission coefficient, right? The famous T that we have been looking for so often in previous videos. As you might recall, determining this T was usually, at the very least, very annoying. But now, with the WKB approximation, we will find a very, very easy and simple way to determine it. So let's begin by looking at the previous result we had. Now, it was this wave function right here. This is what we found in the case when the energy was greater than the potential. And we will very shortly modify this expression to accommodate our new case, right? So let us think of what the situation is that we will be dealing with. Now, usually we will have some incident wave, right? This classical A, E, I, K, X. And it will come upon this potential. After interacting with the potential, some of it will reflect back with amplitude b and e to the minus ikx in the exponent. Now, in here, we don't know what happens, right? The wave function in here, we don't know it. This is what we have to determine with the WKB approximation. And in the third region, we know that we will only have some wave function f e i k x right so at least outside of this potential nothing has really changed when compared to what we have seen in the past now what does the wave function look like we know that as it approaches it will be some sort of sinusoidal function but then when we get to this potential it will begin to exponentially decrease Right. How fast, of course, depends on the pot potential itself. And then in the end, it will continue to be sinusoidal, but of course it will be uh, smaller than what it started off as, because part of it will have been reflected back. So that is what we will be dealing with. So just looking at this, we can imagine that the, the shape of our expression will be exponentially decreasing, right? Our wave function should probably have an exponent that is exponentially decreasing. Now, let's take a look at this formula and let's think what changes when we go from when the energy is greater than the potential to when the energy is less than the potential. Well, there's a few things. Now, one of them is that our k, right, when we are thinking about this k, for example, um, it now goes to i k, because inside of the square root, right, this 2m and what used to be this e minus v, now this thing will be negative. So we can write it as v minus e and factor out the minus 1, as we have done many times before. So basically, we have now a minus inside the square root, which is where this i comes from. So for that reason, our momentum, which we defined as square root of 2m, and again, this is e minus v, but now we can write it as v minus e times minus 1, the momentum will also be complex. So for that reason, we have to do a few things to accommodate. Now, first of all, to accommodate for the fact that we are dealing with a complex momentum, we want the modulus only the magnitude of the momentum instead of the momentum itself. And second of all, we know that the shape inside of the potential must be exponentially decreasing. So for that, re for that reason, this exponent that we see here has to no longer have the positive, right? So now let's think of the current result. So the, now let's say um, current, right? The, current result for e smaller than the potential. Now, in this case, we are only going to be left with the negative case. And the exponent, in order for this to be exponentially decreasing, has to not have this i. So this will simply be 1. 
right? Otherwise, we would still have the sinusoidal function. And we need to add the modulus of the momentum right here and the modulus of the momentum right there. All right. Now, what about our wave functions coming in and coming out? We already know that our wave functions on region one will be these and wave function in region three will be this thing here. Now, how can we relate? How can we find the transmission coefficient? We know that the transmission coefficient is going to be f over a squared. So this, of course, depends on f over a. So what do we know about f over a? Well, we can't really know directly because in order to do that, we need to find um, the exact wave function here, then apply boundary conditions and blah, blah, blah. And we could do that. However, all that we need to know is that this expression, basically a is decreasing exponentially. So this will go as e to the minus, and then we have this beast there. So e to the minus one over h bar, and then we have integral of p of x, d of x, right? But <clears throat> this is only f of a. So the transmission coefficient will be f a squared, which will go as approximately, of course. Now, this will not be entirely correct. We are doing an approximation and in future problems, we will see how big the error will be. But seeing how simple this approach is, right, we simply square this, we get minus two over h bar integral of p of x dx, right? And we can now call this e to the minus two gamma, where gamma is going to be one over h bar integral of p of x dx. And this is everything that we need in order to solve problems um, like this. So any problems where we want to find transmission coefficient using the WKB approximation. All we need to do is find this integral. So we integrate over the momentum and we plug it in there and that is it. Finito. That's it. So as you can see, this is a very, very, very powerful tool that we will be using. And you also can see just how quickly we derived this, right? We simply um, had to think, all right, we know that from region one to region three, we have this exponential decay. So of course, this f over a must go as some constant, which we for now are neglecting, times this exponential decay. So we made this approximation and as we will see in the future, this will be very, very reasonable. So that is it for this method. As you can see, this is very, very quick, but we will see it is still very, very powerful. So I hope this was useful to you. If it was, please consider, consider leaving a like on the video, commenting and subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps me out a lot. And maybe consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.